Ashley with Accomplished Quilting. I'm um, just going to do a quick video today. I saw a post earlier that you might have seen um, somewhere else on Facebook from Sienna about the ruler plate and using it with autopilot. So this is something that I have done. I have actually left the ruler plate on while using robotics for a specific situation. Uh, but I also want to talk about just installing the ruler plate in general because that's going to play into how you use it with robotics. So this is the standard ruler plate. Um, it's pretty big and it comes with the hardware on the back in your starter kit from ANOVA. And to put the ruler plate on, you're gonna slide it under the foot until it gets to the opening. Wiggle it up, pick up your threads. And then the first time you push it down, you might have this little lip. You wanna push it so it's flat. And this should be flush, just like that. So it just snaps down. And then to remove it, you can lift from the edge. Um, but if it's a little tough the first time, you might wanna put your thumb in here and try to lift, uh, but it will get easier over time. So this just snaps down. So one of the things, um, got some thread stuck under there. One of the things to consider when using your ruler plate, whether you have robotics or not, is that your ruler plate can only go as far forward until it hits the backing roller. So this is as far forward as it'll go. Now, without it, of course, um, let's see. Whoop. Without it, the machine can come pretty much all the way to that front roller. The other thing to consider, uh, depending on how your machine was installed, is that you should be able to smoothly, without feeling resistance, go under the back roller with the quilt there as well. So notice this is not touching that leveling bar and there is no movement of the quilt. You can't see the quilt move with the ruler plate there. If you have resistance or if you see the quilt dragging, you might need to change the height of this bar. So that's how you put the ruler plate on, take it off and those are factors to consider. Why you might want to use the ruler plate with robotics. If you get into combining robotics work with ruler work or hand guided stuff, you might find yourself not wanting to cut your threads, take the plate off, do your robotic stuff, turn that off, put the plate back on, do your robotics after that. Um, so it's just a lot of changing around. So for example, if we were working on this quilt um, and I had some ruler work to do in these blocks and I had some autopilot stuff to do in these blocks, you could absolutely leave that plate on while you stitch with the robotics. The only thing to consider, again, is if you drop something in your sew zone that goes to the front max of the sew zone, there's a chance that plate is going to hit this front maximum. The plate is all the way hitting that backing roller and can't go any further. The only two things that stop the machine from moving are the thread break sensor and a needle fault from the encoder stopping moving. So the machine will continue to try to move forward with that plate there. So my best piece of advice, if you're going to be dabbling and combining ruler work with robotics is to actually set your sew zone with the ruler plate on. So that way you're starting at the rear maximum off the edge of your quilt, and then you're moving your sew zone all the way so that the machine knows it has to stop right here. And the pattern will never continue and you won't mistakenly place a pattern in that part of the sew zone with the ruler plate on. So again, if you're gonna combine the work, do the sews on with your ruler plate on. Question? Is there any, what are the disadvantages of having that on then? Is it just losing the space? Just losing the space, yes. That, that would be the only disadvantage. Um, I guess the only other thing to consider is if you had a pieced back. Um, if the backing of the quilt was pieced and it had thick seams, uh, this could actually gently push some of that bulk and cause, but if you have your side clamps on well and everything's laid out without wrinkles, it should will quilt smoothly just fine. Um, so this is the standard ruler base that comes with the machine 
an optional accessory for you to consider if you see yourself venturing into this quite a bit, um, or you just want your throat space back, right? You paid for that big machine, you wanna keep that throat space, get yourself a smaller ruler base. Uh, these are $85, and this is the hardware for it, but just so you can see the size difference. Um, let me turn this around. So if we line up those two lines, you're gonna get a bit of space back in the front. So let's see where this one stops right about there. I'm gonna take this plate off and we'll slide this one on so you can see how much closer we can get to that front edge. And so that way you could do your quick work with the rulers, keeping it safe um, while getting some space back. Special note, the reason we're focusing so much on ruler plates is don't ever risk using rulers without a ruler foot. We've all done it, I've done it, um, it doesn't go well. <laughs> you end up with chips in your rulers. You think you're just gonna do a quick line, do something really fast, I don't need the base, and inevitably that's the day that your ruler slips and breaks your needle. Um, when you have a broken needle, then you might have to adjust your needle bar height, and, and then you'll be calling us. <laughs> so definitely take the time to put the ruler plate on um, and consider the advantages of a smaller ruler plate. Um, and good luck in combining your computerized work with ruler work. It does come out beautiful and it's a lot of fun. Um,